here. It's Jason Stahl with another episode of Under the Radar, and I am pleased to have on the podcast today Josh McFarlane, who is the president and COO of AirPro Diagnostics. Welcome, Josh. Thank you, Jason. Happy to be here. Awesome. And um, let me just kick it off here. I, I know this as a special you know, place in your near and dear to your heart. Uh, social media interest groups, particularly Facebook, when it comes to sharing information about ADAS and calibration and scanning and diagnostics and all the stuff that has to happen today to repair these very sophisticated vehicles. You know, Josh, it seems to me that, uh, that social media has been sort of a blessing and a curse uh, in a way as far as information sharing. It's great that so many people have access to one another now and, and can easily share information. However, sometimes that information is not exactly accurate. You know, we talk about the University of YouTube and things of that nature right. where everyone's an expert and people are uh, maybe perhaps relying too much on these so-called experts for their information. So tell me, in your own opinion, what your feelings are on these Facebook interest groups when it comes to ADOS. Sure. I, I think if you rewind the clock a few years, um, I, I remember there being headlines where schools were concerned about students using Wikipedia. To, to research answers. And, and, and if you're familiar with the Wikipedia model, anyone can go in and create an article or edit an article um, as they see fit. Um, but generally speaking, I, I don't run into all that much, you know, uh, technically inaccurate information, you know, out on, out on Wikipedia, uh, at least not as much as I run into compared to um, some of these Facebook, uh, you know, groups of you know, or specialty interest groups on Facebook. Um, and, and so I'm not going to name the groups because I, I don't think that's going to do any of us any favors. Um, and I won't name the participants. Um, I feel like maybe I should actually be sitting here kind of with the blacked out screen and, you know, kind of just behind the light and, 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 you know, with a, with a voice changer on um, just so that I'm, I'm not identified. Um, but, but the, the, I refer to them as the Facebook experts, right? And so they've got a keyboard and a monitor and a log into Facebook. And now they are the expert on whatever the topic is, whatever the group is, whatever the, the forum might be. And, and so, and, and, and honestly, I think where it goes sideways first is you get into one of these groups and, and it's, I don't know, on any given day, um, whether it's a, a group about ADAS calibrations or it's a group about, um, glass installation or collision repair or, or any of the areas that are kind of relevant to, to my role here at AirPro. On any given day, you'll see somebody come in and say, hey, I'm new here and I'm working on X and I'm having some trouble. Can somebody help? Right. Or some, can somebody give me some pointers? And immediately, like all the trolls come out from under the bridge and, and just start beating the person sen senseless for asking for help. And it's like, well, what's the point of, of having this group in this forum if, if that's how we're going to treat each other and, 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 uh, and the approach that we're going to take? And so thinking about your question of, you know, kind of is it good or a bad thing, I do still see, you know, um, the, the folks that want to try and help and, and want to try and lend information and, and whatever. And I've, I've recently encouraged um, members of, of the team here at AirPro some of our technical team that are in those groups, but they generally, you know, kind of are a fly on the wall. I've encouraged them that when there's a, a straight technical question of, hey, I'm trying to find, you know, the, the wire color for this particular circuit, or what is the definition of this DTC, right? I've encouraged my team to kind of wade into those waters a little bit and just say, hey, I found your answer, it's this, and, and actually identify themselves as AirPro. And so they're signing off as I'm Josh with AirPro Diagnostics when they make that post. Um, just to kind of see how that gets received and whether or not, like I'm not expecting to go, you know, change the, the, the direction of the tide here, but, but maybe it starts to encourage a little bit more, you know, similar behavior. That's interesting, Josh. You said that these people get beat up for asking a question. And that's, that's an interesting and dynamic to me because I wonder why that is the case. Uh, what, what, what is the, what is, isn't that the whole purpose of these forums is to ask questions, get answers and share information? I, I, I think that's the intended purpose. 
Um, but I don't know that it's necessarily the agreed purpose. <laughs> and so I think the intended purpose is absolutely to be able to go in and find some help. Um, but I think people get into the group and, and they see it as an opportunity to, you know, kind of um, demonstrate how superior they are to everyone else, right? Because they're all the expert. And, and, and so it becomes this, you know, kind of exercise in what you don't know that I learned that when I was 12, what kind of moron are you, you know, and, and how are you functioning? You should, you should go find a different career. Like those are the types of responses that, that get thrown around. And so, you know, I find myself kind of questioning, okay, why, why am I here? Well, like, what am I, what am I, what, what good am I hoping to, to bring out of this? But I represent our pro diagnostics and, and we have, you know, we're remote diagnostics and we have the Augie out in the marketplace for forward facing camera calibrations. And, um, and so I go out and I look for, you know, posts or questions or comments that are related to our products and services and, and, and then make a decision about whether to, to, to kind of weigh in and, and, and maybe set the record straight when, when that needs to occur. Um, and sometimes I do, and, and sometimes I don't, you, ha- you kind of have to do this evaluation of, of the post and the thread and, and the, and the conversation and, and, and see whether or not you think you can provide value, or if you're just going to bump it back to the top of the list to get more of the, the trolls to come out and, and beat on it, you know? Um, and so you have to, you have to kind of weigh all of that and, 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 and make your, your best guess. You know, and I guess it's only natural with ADOS. I mean, ADOS is sort of still a mystery to a lot of people, even in this industry. Right. And, you know, you know, what is it and how does radar and LIDAR and cameras and sensors and all this stuff work, you know, and what is its purpose in a vehicle and how do we calibrate it and how do we scan for DTCs? And for guys that have for so long, for the whole history of the auto body industry, been bending metal and heating metal and shaping metal and sanding and welding and all these things. And now they're working on a computer and it's just not in their wheelhouse as far as the skill set. I, I right. think we're gaining ground. Um, mm-hmm. We've had some experience now with ADAS cars and we, we have companies like yourself who are doing a, a great job of educating people and just doing an awesome job at developing technology to help these guys. But so they're, they're, they're desperately seeking information. Um, right. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's no really easy answer to some, some questions or issues that pop up in the daily repair activities that they do. Um, let's talk about specifically, you mentioned the Augie a little while ago, mm-hmm. uh, your tool, a uh, special tool that you have uh, that mounts onto a windshield over the camera and sort of creates a theater-like environment for the, 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 the car to be calibrated. I know, that, I know that there's been a lot of misinformation bandied about, about the Augie uh, and some of these Facebook groups. Talk to me about that. What, what's going on there? So, so thinking about your question, Jason, um, the, way, the way, let me start with an analogy. And that analogy is, imagine that you're back in the, the, the 1950s or 60s and, and you've got a, a toaster oven and you've got a stove top and you've got an oven. And so you've got options on how to heat up and cook your food. And, and someone comes to you and says, Hey, have you seen the new microwaves that they're just coming out with? Um, they're fantastic. Well, what do they do? Well, they use radar waves inside of a metal box and, and it heats up your food and it does it very fast. And, and you're like, ah, no, I'm, I'm good. I, I've got options and, and, and this is the way I've always done it. And this is how I know to do it. And this is what, you know, I'm used to, and this is what my mom did. My grandmother did whatever. Um, and, and this is how, this is how you cook food in this house. And, and so that, that kind of analogy of, I don't need a microwave and I don't understand it. And it's, it must be a trick and it's probably going to give me cancer and, and so on and so forth. And, and like, I think there's probably still people that are worried about whether or not there's, you know, a trick or a downside or, or whatever. And I'm, it's not for cooking everything, but for some things, it's the right way to go. If I want ramen tonight. There's no way I'm cooking it other than in a microwave, you know? Um, and, and so that's kind of what Augie is. Augie is, 
you know, the, the, the conventional method is this full size target on a stand in a, um, in a very sterile environment where the floors are painted a certain color, the walls are painted a certain color. You've got this large footprint of space. Um, you found the center line of the vehicle. You've measured out in front of it a certain distance. You placed the target, you've squared it to the vehicle, you've raised it up to a specified height. Um, and then you're ready to actually start performing the calibration with the diagnostic tool. And, and, and that process is, is very cumbersome, right? It's very technical. Um, it's very, um, there's a high risk of doing something wrong. Okay. Well, if you do something wrong, it's not going to pass. Correct? No, that's not correct either. You can place the target incorrectly and have a successful calibration according to the software. And so you've done it wrong and the vehicle doesn't tell you you've done it wrong and you hand the keys back to the customer. And now the vehicle isn't going to operate the way it's supposed to. There is room for human error. And I'm sure that there's at least a fair number of the Facebook experts that do it right every single time. But I'll bet you there's also a pretty healthy percentage that occasionally make mistakes. I don't know about you, but I do, right? Um, mistakes happen. And so something gets measured wrong or, or whatever, and, but you're still inside the tolerance of what the vehicle will accept, what the software will accept. And so you've got a calibration that says past or successful or complete or whatever. And you've incorrectly calibrated or recalibrated that vehicle. Um, and so Augie is a device that sits on the windshield in front of the forward facing camera. It uses machine vision and an algorithm um, and a database full of measurements that we've collected for every vehicle we cover right? That Augie covers. So we've got a database. When you, when you set it on that Nissan Rogue, right? 2022 Nissan Rogue. If we're covering that vehicle, which we do, we've already gone out and measured a 2022 Nissan Rogue. And we've got ve vehicle measurements in our database that the Augie then uses in conjunction with the OEM process. Cause that's all it is. It's a process. It's not so much a tool the target board, et cetera, as it is a process to get it placed correctly. So we follow that same process and we display a digital target in the correct perspective, according to the camera and the position of the camera on the vehicle. And, and then you can use the, the software to perform the calibration, right? The, the scan tool software, whatever scan tool you might be using. Hopefully it's an error pro, but it could be um, any other scan tool as well. And that gets the job done and you're done. And it happens in a fraction of the time. And what, what, what I like to say is Augie isn't producing a better calibration. Augie's not better because it produces a better calibration. Augie is better because it makes it hard to produce an incorrect calibration. So it takes out some of the risk of human error. Are there things that you could still do wrong as the operator? Yep, absolutely. Can't take all the... You can't completely, you know, idiot proof it, right? You can't completely take out all the room for error, but you can take out some. And, and so, um, we've taken out a fair amount. And, and as a result of that, we feel that it is harder to produce an incorrect result. Um, but we know we're producing a, the, the correct result. Um, we had testing done with a third party, uh, test facility, proving grounds up in Michigan, Fowlerville, um, and they tested us against the standards produced by NHTSA or the National Highway Traffic, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and IIHS or the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety. And, and so we had um, the vehicle that was calibrated with an Augie tested against those standards and we passed those, those tests with flying colors. Um, so we know it's doing what it's supposed to do and it's harder to make it do what it's not supposed to do. And it seems to me that that's a pretty good scenario to be in. Yeah, I, and obviously, Josh, I saw you at SEMA in Vegas and I was able to use the Augie myself. And the first right. uh, thing I noticed was how light it was. It looked heavy to me. When I picked it up, I'm like, wow, this is, I can throw this up in the air. This is pretty light. And I was mm -hmm. able to do it myself, which is amazing because I am not a technical genius, that's for sure. 
Uh, but um, so, so you've told us about the Augie. What are people saying out there on Facebook and these interest groups that, that, that flies in the face of what you know the Augie to be? I think the, the biggest component is that it's generally kind of this misconception that we're somehow tricking or fooling the camera. And, and it's not a trick. It's not fooling anything. It's math. So if you, if you look at what the, the full size or conventional calibration process is, it's taking a target that has very specific values associated with it. That pattern has a very specific value. Okay. You're taking that target, you're split, placing it out at a specific distance, you're squaring it to the vehicle, you're raising it up at a certain height, and, and you're saying, okay, now it's where it needs to be. Let me go through and, 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 and calibrate the, the camera so that I can train the camera how to see the world around it. Okay? That's the whole point of the process. And so Augie just says, okay, well, we, we, we can do the math. And we know that if it's if it's supposed to be at 2,000 millimeters in front of the vehicle and raised up to a height of 450 millimeters, and I'm just making up these numbers, um, so I'm sure um, some other Facebook expert is going to tell me that there isn't a vehicle that uses a 2,000 millimeter distance, but I'm using it just to illustrate the point. And, and so we can do the math and say, well, if that's what's supposed to happen based on the center line of the front axle, measuring out from there or the leading edge of the front bumper measuring out from there, we can fill in the blanks and, and we can take into account the slope from the camera, whether it's looking up to the target or down to the target or straight ahead at the target, whether it's on, whether the camera is on the center line of the vehicle. And so it's looking straight ahead at the target, or if it's off the center line of the vehicle, it's, it's off center. Um, we, we, we can uh, account for the perspective, and we can account for the distance. It's just math. And so presenting that digital target at the appropriate scale and distance and perspective to the camera is all that it takes. And so um, I don't, it, it, there's, there's no trick, you know, where, you know, I, I see people throw up, you know, like images of, remember the childhood toy, the, the viewfinder? Um, it was like, it looked like a little set of binoculars and you could look through it and you'd see the images, right? In, in like, sort of like 3D. Um, um, and, and they, you know, they're, they're like, look, here's the next version of the Augie. Uh, that won't work. That's not going to get the job done. And that's not what we're doing. Um, we're not displaying a target and then lining that target up to the vehicle. We're, we're lining the, the Augie up on the vehicle and allowing machine vision to find the, the necessary characteristics on that vehicle to determine the relationship between the Augie and the vehicle and then display the target. It's, it's a much different process than, than you might get at first blush, but um, the common denominator in, with, with most of the Facebook experts, because we, we track all the, all the customers and all the, all the prospects and, and who we do demos with and things like that, you know what the common denominator is? None of them have used it, but they're all sure how it works or how it doesn't. And they haven't actually had any hands on time with it. They haven't used it. They haven't um, actually put hands on it. And so um, I don't know about you, but I find it, I, you know, I'm, I, I might be an expert on a few things, um, but I can tell you what I'm not an expert on. I'm not an expert on anything that I haven't actually used or, or touched or gotten to know, right? How can you be? So that's a good I don't point. Know. That's, 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 uh, I'm, I'm running the risk of being on my own soapbox here. So I apologize. No, that's a good point. And I think anybody who claims to be an expert on something right off the bat, at least in my experience, you know, is running the risk of shutting down learning, right? Because if you think you right. know it all, then you will stop, you just will shut off that valve for learning. And I think that's, a bad thing. You know, one of these things sure. about these groups is, um, and it's like Google reviews, you know, business reviews of your business, you know, tracking those, managing those. I mean, it's, it is like a 24 seven job and we all have personal lives and we all have business responsibilities. We can't sit in these groups all day and monitor this stuff. Have you, have you, have you, and I know you said you sometimes will jump in and, 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 you know, kind of be a fly on the wall or sometimes address a question or, uh, 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 um, answer somebody's question. 
have, if you figure out a, a foolproof way to to uh, take this on, attack this head on, this this misinformation campaign on Facebook, and and get in there and solve it, is there is there a, have you figured that out, or is it just it's just it's just not going to happen because it's just it's just too prevalent and it's just too crazy? Uh, I definitely haven't figured it out, um, and uh, and I know you and I have run into each other on Facebook in the, in the past and and things like that. Um, I'm I'm sure. Your, your experience is similar to mine. Um, there, it's like it's for sport, right? It's it's like um, it's it's a game for so many people. Um, and for me, it's um, you know looking to protect our our brand and our reputation and 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 things like that. So I take it seriously. Um, but I you have to like you know like I said before, you have to really evaluate kind of when and how to engage and, and whether it's worth it. Right. Um, you know, one of my colleagues likes to say whether the juice is worth the squeeze and, uh, and, and you have to, you have to evaluate that each time. Um, so no, I definitely haven't figured out the foolproof way. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's some instances where, um, by jumping in, I became the fool, um, you know, cause that's, that's the risk that you're running, you know, um, sometimes when, when you can't figure out who the idiot is that you're arguing with, the idiot might be you, right? Just for being the one that jumped in and, and tried to, you know, you see what the behavior is, you see the pattern and, and to think I'm going to correct it or change it, um, isn't, isn't reasonable, but I like to think that there's probably some other people out there like me that when I don't understand something or I disagree with something, my first choice is to go talk to the person that I don't understand that I disagree with so that, I, so that I can understand it better. We may not come away in full agreement, but I'm not convinced that my position is, is set in stone on anything. You know, the whole point of, you know, back to your, 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 your um, comment about education and training and learning, the whole point of that is you have to be open-minded and you have to be willing to engage, Right. And I'm not looking to make this uh, this discussion here political, but it's the same in that in that scape in that that landscape, right? Which is also very prevalent on 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 Facebook. And and if you're not willing to kind of talk to someone who has a different view of your own, your view is not likely to change. So I engage, um, and and I've learned some things, right? Um, absolutely, from from you know being challenged on it. And so I I. We've, we've made adjustments because we've been challenged. You know, there's, there's things that we've gone and gone back and we've made adjustments on. And, and so is the product better for it? Sure. Absolutely. Do you think part of the problem, Josh, out there, the confusion is, you know, we saw at SEMA, um, uh, there's so many calibration equipment manufacturers and they all have their own angle. And we saw, we saw that at SEMA, you know, there's, they were sure. unveiling some new stuff with new technology, and this is the way you should do it, and this is why our our machine is preferred. Is, is you know, we're, we're sort of in the wild west, I think, of ADOS right now, as far as learning and understanding, and then all this equipment that we're being looked, you know, having to look at and review. Is it right for my shop? And how do I, you know, should I do it in house? Should I farm it out to somebody? Should I send it to a dealer? But is, do you think that's part of the confusion? Is that is that there's all these offerings and everybody's saying it's, you know, their, their, their equipment is the one you should choose. Is that part of the, the confusion? I, I'm sure that's part of it, right? We all have our own products to, to offer and they all have, you know, strengths and weaknesses. Um, and, and so, you know, for instance, Augie is for the forward facing camera. It doesn't do blind spot. It doesn't do radar, et cetera. We have other solutions for that within AirPro. For those things, but Augie as a product is for the forward-facing camera, and and so there are other products that have wider coverage or deeper coverage, depending on how you're looking at it. Whether it's the sensors that need to be um, calibrated, or it's the vehicle um, options that need to be calibrated, right? The, the number of different vehicles that are in the marketplace, um, but they they all have pros and cons. And, and, and you have to evaluate what those are and what's going to work best for you. Um, if you're, for instance, in the, in the glass space and you're looking to be able to do mobile calibrations for the forward facing camera, um, I don't think there's anything that comes even close, um, from a competitive advantage standpoint to the Augie. And, uh, 
I say that as as somebody who's very invested in the in the product and its and its success, but also just from a practical or pragmatic point of view, that it's it's the only way you're going to do it and be mobile, um, and, and and do it correctly and and take out some of the 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 risk of human error and and complexity. Um, so uh, it comes down to you know your business needs and and what you're trying to accomplish with it. Um, but it's certainly um, it's certainly a very complex landscape right now. It is the the wild west to your point. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned AirPro Diagnostics. Really is an all in one solution. I think that I saw that trend too. A lot of these companies uh, are becoming are, are are now offering solutions for everybody. Whether you need a remote uh, access to a rem- remote expert, um, right. whether you, whether you, you your shop environment is not conducive to calibration when well, we got a machine for you you know there's and whatever whatever your dilemma or problem you run into uh you've got a solution and, and that's a very encouraging trend i believe it is yeah it's it's good to be in a space where you can be consultative right you can you can engage with your customer or your prospect and you can find out what it is they're trying to do and you can bring solutions to the table um i i think the at least in this space right now, the notion of a one size fits all um, seems to be, you know, not the the driving force. It, it is well. Let me let me find out what you need and let me kind of tailor a solution that will that will um, meet those requirements. And um, we put a lot of value in that. Um, we put a lot of emphasis with our with our team on on being consultative and. And, and helping to understand, because um, sometimes the customer doesn't know what they need yet, right? So you have to engage with them to find out what they're trying to do. And some of it's gonna be helping to kind of peel back the layers of the onion with them um, in order to figure that out. Um, and so we work with other industry partners as well. Um, and, and sometimes we're not um, the the right single c- solution. Maybe it's a, it's a, it's a combination of of, of, of options from us and some of our partners. And, and so we'll work together with our partners in those situations to, to, to help kind of land at what the right mix is. Yeah, you know, and, and Josh, it's, it's, it's so fascinating to, to watch the level uh, that of, of uh, inventiveness and entrepreneurship and innovation that's going on in this industry regarding ADAS. It's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing to watch. I mean, it's a, it, you know, and, and it's the capitalism a capitalist system working right there's a need right. and you're filling that need but but the level that is of of uh, innovation uh is staggering and we owe your company and others a huge debt of gratitude for this i mean we you know this industry will get through this right i mean you know we've seen the transition to waterborne paint you know going back even mm-hmm. further you know handwritten to electronic estimating you know uh, uh right. um, the, the transition to the unibody frame this industry time and time again face challenges over the last sure. few years and then overcome those challenges. We just, we just do, yeah. you know, through a lot aluminum of trucks, right? pardon, aluminum trucks. We never thought that was going to work. Yes. You know, right. Right. And, 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 and they're out there and prevalent and, and being repaired and, and it's, and it's doing, it's going just fine. Right. Well, Josh, I want to thank you so much for being on under the radar today. Um, the information you gave us was great. And, uh, it's something that we have not covered in this podcast yet, this phenomena of the social media and what's going on out there with information sharing. So again, thank you so much. Absolutely, Jason. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, that was great. Appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this episode of Under the Radar. For more episodes, visit bodyshopbusiness.com.